Hello and welcome back to Evolve Models for part 9 of our Spitfire Mark 16 build. There are some areas on the aircraft that are going to need a bit of filler, just like this bit here. But first up, I want to get some primer onto the bird. We should be able to see the areas that need some attention a bit easier once it's got some primer on it. As usual, I'm using my primer of choice, but this time in white. And here are the items that I want to get primed up ready. I'm going to use a different airbrush today. I bought a small airbrush so my father could use it. He's not very dexterous and I thought a single action airbrush would be useful for him. But it does have a nice 0.3 or 0.4 needle so it should be great for doing primer work. As usual following the holy grail we're just going to lay down some light coats of primer to start with and build it up gently. When it comes to actual painting the aircraft, I'm not going to do any pre-shading because we've got camouflage that's going on it and I don't think it's going to work that well when you've got camouflage. I tend to do some post-shading afterwards. You may have noticed I've got the needle guard off to the side on the paper. It was starting to build up at the end of the airbrush and spit a bit, so I just took it off. Just beware and be careful you don't prod the needle anywhere. There's some more auxiliary parts that need to be painted too, so I'll put them into the styrofoam and I'm going to paint them individually. We've got all sorts of stuff like the engine exhaust and some of the other minor assemblies. Eventually all of the parts will get painted in their own colour, but while I've got the primer out I might as well get them done now. A bit of a word of warning, this primer is great but it does smell and it's not acrylic based. You must use it in a well ventilated area and wear a face mask as well. The extractor unit I've got isn't really up to it so I'm wearing a face mask. I'm also looking at getting a new extractor fan which should help matters. Okay so we finished priming and as expected there are a few places that are going to need a bit of attention. So first up we have down here which I knew was going to be a bit of a problem because it didn't go together particularly well. So if we got a little cocktail stick, I think we've got some work to do here, here and some of the seam line down the top here. Now the good thing about putting the primer on is we can see any of the areas um, that are affected. Now I thought um, earlier on that we were going to have a real bad problem down here but it doesn't seem as bad as I expected it to be. Um, it could have been worse, put it that way and hopefully we can do something with that and it is again the same on this side down here. I thought this bit here was going to be a lot worse than it actually is so that's relatively good news. Um, the door, I'm not too bothered about the door there because at the end of the day they're not going to be completely flat all the way down. I'll just take that little bit of a nick off the edge and that should be alright. Um, but these are just going to need a little bit of work on, on, on here and again as we can see on the top here um, and down the back. But if we flick it over and go on to the bottom side here um, again there's a few areas specifically down here with a lower cowling um, and down here um, we need to take some, uh, some attention and then again down the back um, of these which are the normal areas where you're going to have problems um, and a bit just here where these, these meet here. Um, I'll be using putty I think to do this um, and we'll, we'll get that on there and uh, see what we can do with it and again just around some of these gun uh, mantlet type um, things there uh, but overall it seems to have gone alright. We should have a little bit on the wing there as well. Uh, a little bit of a gap, we should be able to sand those out. But uh, apart from that, it's really as expected. Uh, so I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, start working on these and sanding it back. There are many different types of fillers available on the market, from Mr. Surfacer to this sort of stuff, and even the Vallejo plastic putty. It really is a case of whatever suits you. I'm just using a small sculpting spatula just to lay it on. As always just remember the more you put on the more you've got to take off. I'm trying to be a bit careful not to go over too many lines so we don't have to do much rescribing.
where I've got any areas of overspill, I'm just going to use a moist Q-tip and just rub it off gently. You'll have to do this pretty quickly and don't let it set up too much else it'll be really hard to remove. When I was building the wheel assemblies I could tell that there's going to be some filler work needed and here we go. I'm just going to use a Q-tip to put it on and remove it. We don't need too much on here, the gaps aren't chasms. And it's the same with these bombs as well. I'm not sure if we're going to use these but hey, I might as well while I'm here. To be honest, this was the area of most concern. I think I'm going to lose a bit of detail on here, which I will try to put back, but we'll see how it goes. I think I left the filler to dry for about 3 or 4 hours, and then just went back over them all with a sanding stick. When it comes to painting her, I'm going to try a different set of paints. I've heard rave reviews of MRP paints and managed to get hold of some in the UK. So we're going to give them a go. They look like they do a great range of colours for RAF, German and Russian. Even some of the ones you can't normally get. Moving on to the areas now that are most visible and most concerning. We've got this top bit here that goes all the way down to the rear of the aircraft and then we're going to move on to the underwing cowlings.
Admittedly, the amount of filler and sanding work needed is more than I expected from the kit, but I presume it's probably more to do with my skill than Eddard. Thanks for joining me in this episode and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.